Yeah, so, so the, the next presenter is Mark. Uh, Mark has studied as a science uh, operations engineer for planetary missions. His first mission was the Venus Express. If, if that was a bus, then <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> so no, uh, he said that no one remembers uh, Venus Express because uh, 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 never sent any cool pics, but. So see, his second mission was Rosetta, and everyone remembers Rosetta for the contrary. So uh, uh, now it's moved to, the, to a SPICE and Auxiliary Data Engineer for ESA, and, uh, and uh, ESA planetary mission, which literally makes him the SPICE guy. So. <laughs> SPICE boy. Yeah. <laughs> okay, my, my, my talk is rather boring, and it's, it's really depressing to, to present after such a nice I Python, well, Jupyter Notebook based uh, presentation. Mine one is dull and boring. I need to, f to use the official uh, layout for, <laughs> for PowerPoint. But contrary to uh, what was said in the previous talk of Orekid, I am here to sell you spice. Okay, so. <laughs> but the nice thing is that it's for free and it's really helpful. Uh, I think that this talk is very well contexted within the talks that we have just seen right now. Also because I should apply some testing to my own pipelines, which I still don't have had. I haven't had time to do. So here we go with the boring stuff. So um, ancillary data, it's one of those words which is not pedantic, but really knows what it means. <laughs> so at least when we talk about ancillary data, we are talking about uh, spacecraft or body trajectory and orientation, right? Now, we also often refer to reference frame specifications, not to confuse with coordinate systems. That's a, a nerd there. Instrument mounting alignment, uh, field of view specifications, uh, and physical and cartographical constants for the target bodies that we're observing. In your case, it's mainly the Earth, I assume. And also data needed for time conversions. Now, the purpose of ancillary data is basically to help uh, mission designers, scientists, to converge on a mutually acceptable orbit design, to compute uh, the geometry of observations, and the conditions uh, needed by operations engineers to do tasks such as communications, antenna coverage and pointing, thermal and power analysis, payload operations, scheduling, and then also to compute the observation geometry and the conditions needed by the payload teams to do observation planning, archive preparation, data analysis, everything. Right? So we need ancillary data for everything in space missions. Now, when we build up, so to speak, an ancillary data framework, we end up having something like this. Uh, this is a an infamous sketch in which you can see like the space, you can see some objects. Uh, we've got like, we've got the, the sun, we've got the position with respect to the solar system by the center of different, different bodies. We've got the orientation, uh, size and shape of a planet. Um, we've got the same thing for a, for a spacecraft. We've got models for the field of view of a given sensor in the spacecraft. We've got reference frames for the antennas on the Earth. So we build up on those blocks, reference frames, positions, orientation, size, shapes, pointing information, time conversions, and we get like the overall picture, right? Now, typically we use ancillary data in, this, in the following way. So on the one side, we've got the minimal information that we're talking about, especially we also might have even spacecraft clock uh, correlation with your favorite time system. Then we have some software and what we obtain from it is observation geometry in the, in the shape of parameters, altitude, longitude, latitude, phase angle, whatever, and also conditions for our uh, observations. So is the spacecraft in occultation, well, by Mars, in my field, is the altitude at the global maximum, uh, how far am I from this other uh, element in the constellation, am I seeing it, is the phase angle in the range of whatever. So. We have to go from these ancillary data to actually what we want to exploit, which is the observation geometry. Now, a minimal approach to having this system would be at least to have a table of reconstructed time tag spacecraft position vectors. And the same thing with orientation quaternions. Uh, and probably want to have that using some sort of uh, time tags, right, like UTC. Um, now, the issue is that when we have that, then the project leaves it to the end users to use this data uh, with some other data 
and with some software that probably the users will have to have built in order to exploit this type of data. Now, if that's uh, the minimal, so, so to speak, what you provide to your stakeholders, okay, uh, well, there's some advantages, which is that you might probably don't have to do much. Um, you will minimize the cost, probably, and uh, you also minimize the components of your project. But of course, there are some clear uh, disadvantages. Um, and I will just skip to this other uh, fancy, old-fashioned uh, diagram. So when you have this sort of minimal approach, the problem is that you have different actors that are generating different types of ancillary data. So on the one side, you might have your flight dynamics team, which is receiving the raw information, uh, generating some sort of ancillary data that it's putting somewhere. Then you'll have someone in the ground, uh, ground segment processing that ancillary data maybe to be provided to a science team or some other clients. And you have like another place in which you archive this type of data or that you use to provide this data. And well, then the users may even have to do it in a different way. So as you can see here, the problem is that we are like, uh, the ancillary data itself, it's, uh, it's basically, we're, we're not controlling it. And on top of that, uh, you can replicate this multiple times because you might have users that use data from different missions. And uh, in a cross-mission con um, context, the, the formats and the, and the um, conventions will change as well. So what is the solution? Solution is SPICE. Okay, so in a nutshell, that's the, like the motto. So SPICE is an information system that uses this type of data to provide solar system, that includes the Earth. Huh? Geometry information to scientists and engineers in order to plan and analyze scientific information from space instruments, blah, blah, blah. It's originally developed by, by NASA, by NAIF, JPL. And uh, basically the three, because you know, if you do a list, I think it has to have three elements. So the three main points that I would like to outline is that it provides a large suite of software. I'll just send, uh, show you something afterwards. To read this data and to compute the observation geometry. It's open source, okay? So the code is, it's, it's open and you can obtain it. Uh, it. It doesn't have any kind of vital restrictions that uh, were uh, discussed briefly um, yesterday. It's uh, the thing that you will ever see that it has been tested the most. It's extensively used, used and there's way too much resources to learn it, okay? Actually, there's too much resources. Uh, it's also recommended uh, means of archiving and serial data by NASA, Planetary Division, uh, PDS, and the IPDA as well, the Interplanetary Data Anal uh, Alliance. So then you go from a system like this to something like this, in which you've got the different sources of ancillary data that you need to convert to SPICE format. But in this case, you don't have these many actors. You might have a team, a single team, that generates the SPICE data that you need. This is the types of SPICE data that you need then to run the software. I don't want to go into detail into that because there's no time. Or you could have a more distributed approach in which the knowledge on how to generate this ancillary data already in SPICE format is held by the pieces of the, of the people who actually are generating the original data. So how do we, how do we use SPICE? We take the different um, data types that we need, which will probably come in a single directory or as a single Git repository, in the case for these uh, planetary emissions, or somewhere. You'll have a list of files that you will have to load. And basically what you are gonna do is that you're gonna use a few of the SPICE toolkit library modules Okay, so there's like, a, there's a library, and then there's uh, hundreds of APIs, and you will use a reduced set of them. You'll run your own, and with that, you'll have your program, and clack. You'll have anything you want to do. Evaluate the planned orbit, uh, generate the instrument pointing plan, plan, view uh, period generation, perform analysis of communications, science data analysis. Um, maybe, okay, let me, ro uh, let me go back. So the components of SPICE are the following. You've got the library of subroutines. As I mentioned before, it's around 1,500. You're gonna use a f uh, just use a few. There's also a reduced set of um, 
executables uh, that you can obtain for your favorite OS, which basically uh, are encapsulate different APIs for common uses. Also, um, especially in order to generate SPICE data and to manage SPICE data. And there's a lot of documentation. So you've got uh, highly annotated source code, it's amazing. Uh, 23 technical reference manuals and user guides. And you also have a uh, complete uh, training suite, let's say, available. And soon we also have the complete three day class in YouTube, if you cannot sleep at night. <laughs> the, currently we've got uh, four languages, Fortran, <laughs> which is the core, C, <laughs> IDL, MATLAB, but also with official stamp uh, of the developers, we've got Python and also uh, we have uh, JNI. It's available for all uh, platforms. Uh, and right now they're working on Spice 2.0, which will be based on C++, by the way. So how do, we use it? how do we use it? Well, as I mentioned before, we can do many, 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 many things. Um, this kind of scenario is what we would have, so we could compute <laughs> Any kind of uh, parameters, such as position velocities, size, shape, or what I mentioned before. Uh, so we have, we can solve the direct problem in any kind of geometry. I give you time and you give me the quantity. But we can also solve the inverse problem in which I give you a geometry condition and you give me the windows of opportunity in which those conditions are met. Like, uh, tell me when I am um, in between this range um, of distance with this respect to this body. Um, we are the ESA SPICE service, so we provide uh, SPICE kernels for the ESA planetary missions. We also pro, uh, develop somehow uh, in the um, evolution of SPICE, and we also provide consultancy of using uh, and exploiting SPICE data for these missions. So it's a lot of work. For the last two years, it's been me. Um, now we've got some help from Brion Geiger. We have him at uh, half uh, time, and Alfredo Trini is here as well. Uh, there's a couple of things, very cool things that we also provide that I, have done, I don't have time to go through because as I mentioned, I wanted to sell you SPICE, which is Web Geocalc and Cosmographia. Uh, we've got training classes uh, as well. Next one in Europe will be around 2020. That's my conclusion. Okay, extended. There's a poster outside which might be of interest, which is applying SPICE to the flying laptop. Another one by Nicola Altavelli on a more scientific um, application. I have a demo in the demo session, so you can just come to me and I'll give you a small demo. And we have many communication channels. So we are now on Twitter since last Friday. Uh, a site which is not really up to date. You can contact me via email, a GitHub page, which I'm working on, and uh, all the spice kernels for our missions available to you. And that's everything. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So do we have questions, feedback, comments on SPICE? Oh, Pablo here. Yeah. Hi, Mark. Thank you for the presentation. I have one question. I work in Earth Observation at ESOC, and I am not aware of any activity regarding SPICE. Uh, what do you think that the SPICE could provide us ad an additional value? to Earth observation missions? It's true that so far that we know there's no uh, Earth observation mission that has adopted SPICE completely. We know that SMOS use it, uses it um, in a very reduced fashion. Uh, we would like to try to introduce it to Earth observation missions, at least for ESA. The thing is that um, nothing prevents anybody working on an Earth observation mission to use SPICE. You already have high precision models for the rotation of the Earth, as good as any other, and maybe even the best ones available. So the only thing you have to do is that you have to generate the kernels on your own, which is not rocket science. Uh, so it would be simply that these sort of missions would uh, integrate it in their system. The problem is that it's not well known in the Earth observation community, or at least that's my impression. And, um, and people are not really aware of the power that it has. So the nice thing is that although it doesn't provide you like uh, out of the box, I don't know, ground dark visualization or, um, yeah, uh, or uh, an ancillary data quick look tool, um, it's 
it's really easy, or at least it's really, it's not extremely complex to obtain uh, or to build maybe uh, components of your ground segment. I don't know if you were aware that it existed, so to speak. So uh, sometimes I feel that like a priest, you know, just now spreading the word on the <laughs> small sat community. You want to definitely get users to try and get give you feedback, right? Must, must. Okay, uh, do you hear about the SPICE software for electronics? Yeah, when I was a trainee, I was a, well, I'm an aerospace engineer, so we used to do, use MATLAB in my, in my university. So when I, when I saw this, I was like, ah, electronics, no, I'm not really interested in that. <coughs> I know, yeah, we get a lot of that. Maybe you yeah. should add some, something to this name, because everybody will be thinking about SPICE is just electronic software. It's, yeah, I mean, it depends on the community. Nobody in the planetary science community <laughs> knows about the other spies. <laughs> but uh, Google gets it confusing, yeah. <laughs> That's the problem. I cannot change it, sorry. Yeah, yeah, okay. All right, if you have feedback, comments, you can reach out to Mark. And I think the best way is to join you at the demo, right? And, uh, and, uh, and show what it can do. So thank you, Mark.